Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is July 14th, 2022. This video is called Tribulation. I believe that the world has entered into tribulation. We have not yet begun to see the day of wrath where God punishes the evildoers for the evil that they have done, but we have certainly entered a time of tribulation where God is <clears throat> sifting like fine wheat his people. Now we should expect that if the glorification of the first fruits and then the rest of the Bride of Christ is at hand. I believe it is at hand. The, this is um, the most trying time of my life because um, I don't have any sense of God's nearness or presence. He is not answering any prayers. Uh, I have been in two very serious uh, illnesses over the last six, seven months. My wife has been uh, very sick for the last year and is not making any progress. <clears throat> Even now, um, the other, the only child I have living at home, my 28-year-old son, is very sick with what appears to be COVID, and my wife just went through that on top of the other very debilitating sickness that she has. For some reason, I did did not catch COVID. It may be because I had it uh, last December. Also, uh, a couple that we're very close to, that lives near us and that we are close to in the faith, has been very sick with this disease for the last two weeks. They're still Come, hopefully coming out of it, but they have been very sick as well for two full weeks. Here in this house, it's been for uh, one full week. My wife also has no feeling of the presence of God right now. When we pray, it's like uh, the heavens are brass, It's almost like anything that we touch these days fails from, uh, from a chainsaw that won't work to a garden that won't grow or a garden in which pests get into and destroy everything. That's my wife who does that. Earlier this year, in anticipation of the uh, coming food shortages that are planned for us. We bought 25 chickens and uh, just as we were moving them out of our basement to outside, put them into a shed that we have just before our coop was to get here and the um, heat lamp fell to the ground and started the shed on fire and killed all of the chickens. Several weeks ago, I attempted to, um, well, I bought a track phone. I've never had a cell phone, but I, because of uh, the stroke that I had at the beginning of March of this year, I decided not to, um, practice law, 
not take on any new cases, finish up the little bit that I had. I, I had felt that the Lord was leading me to wind up my practice. Um, so I bought a track phone and then I transferred the number, my, my um, law office number to that. And it, it was a nightmare getting it done. I had to call track phone and spend hours and hours with them. They never did get it right. And finally, my service provider, Fidelity, uh, made a few changes on their application to change, to, to uh, port my number to them. And I got that done. And then, through some weirdness with their system, I, I had enrolled uh, in auto refill, uh, but I kept getting email messages that I needed to do that or else my service would end. I called them twice, confirmed both times, yeah, you're, you're enrolled, you're in auto refill. And then the day came um, for um, the cutoff and my phone didn't work. I called, I spent over an hour couple days ago with them and they tried to they, they assured me that they had not cut it off and then two people that I talked to spent over a half hour each trying to get my phone to work and it never did and finally I just had to ask for a refund so um, there goes my law office telephone number that I've had for 22 years well do I believe what I say? You know, it doesn't doesn't matter, does it? You know, we have entered the time where everything is failing. The things that we're going through, although um, mind numbing, are not nearly as bad as some of the horror stories that you will find if you just search for them a little bit of people who took the jab and then have suffered incredibly because of it and many have died. The reason that I'm doing this video today is because we're, we're in a time when we don't sense the presence of God, we don't see God doing anything positive, we don't see the wickedness coming down in this world. Instead, we see it exalted and continuing to be exalted and, and everything goes on as it always has with gross deception and just continuing deception. And the news is, um, it seems clear to me that they are planning for um, worldwide food shortages to begin as early as this September. But yet God is, um, not overly concerned that we are prepared uh, for that. Witness the death of my 25 chickens and the eggs we would have gotten from those. When the time comes, I believe that God will provide for his people. Right now, of course, we're able to buy food. But when we can't, there's going to be provision. And what we have to what we have to do is we have to continue to walk in faith and continue to praise God. So I want to go to a few scriptures today I think that will help us to uh, get through this time. The first is in the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk is uh, one of the minor prophets 
There's only three chapters in the book. I'm going to read a little bit from the beginning and skip most of it until the end. But the beginning is just, it's so like today. Oh Lord, oh I am. How long shall I cry for help and you will not hear? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity? And why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous. So justice goes forth perverted. Well, that's the world we live in. You know, and, and this is what Habakkuk saw over 2,600 years ago. Now God promises to do something someday. But so far that day has not come. Chapter 3 of Habakkuk is a prayer of Habakkuk and it ends like this. Verses 17 through 19. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice, and I am. And I will take joy in the God of my salvation. I am the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. So do you understand how utterly barren and devastated this time would be? Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the pro produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Well, that's pretty much describing the world that we're coming into. They have engineered a drought here in Missouri, where I live. They gave us profuse rains in the spring, very cold weather, which destroyed... Um, some of the uh, fruit trees of uh, the fruit. And then as soon as it got to the beginning of June, no rain at all. And so all of our pastures are totally withered. We have over 60 head of cattle and uh, we, we did a first cutting of hay which was not enough for a normal winter here because we need to literally plan for six months of hay here in Missouri because often grass does not grow for six full months. And so we still lack about a hundred large round bales of hay to have enough. And we were hoping for what's called a second cutting and that usually occurs in September uh, when things cool down again and the grass grows. But you have to have rain for the grass to grow. So we, we may be looking at a situation where we have to begin feeding bales of hay to our cattle before winter. And there would be no way we could have enough um, hay to last through the winter. So that would mean a massive sell-off of cattle, which means losses. Already, we lose money every year. So what Habakkuk is describing here is prophetically the time that we live in. But how, how should we deal with that? Even though that happens, even though Everything is dire. 
yet I will rejoice in I am. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. Now let's look how the writer of Hebrews deals with this. I'm going to read uh, most of chapter 12 of Hebrews. Consider Jesus who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. In other words, you have not been killed for your faith yet, if you're reading this. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you like sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have, earth, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them, but God disciplines us for our good that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Yeah, this is an incredibly painful time. It does not seem pleasant. It's not pleasant, it's painful. Verse 12 of chapter 12 of Hebrews. Therefore lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint but rather be healed. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble and by it many become defiled. And see to it that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. You need to read Exodus chapter, chapters 18 and 19 concerning this because this was the time, and 20, this was the time when uh, God gave the Ten Commandments to Moses. Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels and festal gathering and to the assembly of the firstborn, the ecclesia of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. This is a word to the overcomers. This is a word to the firstborn. This is a word to those who hope to be the first fruits from the dead and to those who are still alive and left when it is time for that. Something that my wife and I have hoped would be true for us, but we have both held each other while we thought the other was dying. Uh, but we're both still here, so we don't know. We don't know uh, if we'll die before that time or not.
Now, Hebrews is written to Christians. I don't understand how most Christians could possibly think that the warnings in the book always refer to people who are not believers, but they all refer to believers. So in Hebrews 12, 25, it says, See that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This is quoting from the prophet Haggai. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken, that is, things that have been made, in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom, kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Then I want to go down into chapter 13 and start at verse 7. Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Now he's talking about true leaders, true men who were anointed by God to bring forth the word imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods which have not benefited those devoted to them. Remember, food refers to your spiritual teaching. What spiritual food do you take in? Isaiah 28 talks about taking in a wine that leads to vomit and defiled tables. That's talking about false doctrine. Don't be led away by diverse and strange teachings. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. We are to eat from our altar. Well, what's that? That's Christ. I am the bread of life. You must eat my flesh and drink my blood. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burned outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here, we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. We must have it in our minds to come out of their city Come out of Babylon. Read Revelation chapter 18. If you do not come out of Babylon, you will share in her sins and you will share in her plagues. Unfortunately, too many Christians did not come out of Babylon. And therefore, they did share in her sins and they also shared in her plagues. What are the... What? are her plagues. Well, how about COVID? How about monkeypox? How about the vaccine? Those are plagues. Those are plagues that you get if you dwell in Babylon. We seek the city that is to come, New Jerusalem. Read Revelation chapters 21 and 22. 
New Jerusalem is the city that is comprised of living stones. It's the city that is comprised of God's people who consent to become like he is, which is holy, righteous. And then verse 15. Through Jesus, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. It is a sacrifice to praise God when you don't feel his presence, when you feel like you're dying, when you see your wife or your child die. It is a sacrifice to praise God. God, why didn't you heal her? God, why didn't you heal him? Why won't you speak to us? Why won't you tell us what you're doing? God is not telling us because he is testing us. He wants to see what's really in our hearts. Have we really meant what we've said all these years? Do we really believe? It's hard to continue to believe when you see chemtrails every day, you see the weather systems manipulated so that it destroys your crops, destroys your herd of animals, destroys your trees, causes wildfires. It's hard to praise God when you see the world destroyed by those who carry out Satan's desires. It's hard. But I praise God. I praise you, Father. I thank you that you are my God. There is no other. There is nowhere else to go. I would not choose anyone else because you are the God of truth, the God of righteousness, the God of holiness, the God of love the God of peace. You are our God. Jesus, you came and you died for us. And I praise you, I thank you that you have molded me and my wife and my children to walk in your ways. I thank you, Lord. And I praise you in Jesus' name.